Undersea oil pipeline operation in World War II. Operation Pluto was an operation by British engineers, oil companies and the British Armed Forces to construct submarine oil pipelines under the English Channel in support of Operation Overlord, the Allied invasion of Normandy during the Second World War. Pipelines would reduce the reliance on coastal tankers, which could be affected by bad weather, were subject to air attack, and needed to be offloaded into vulnerable storage tanks ashore. Camouflaged pumping stations were established at Sandown on the Isle of Wight, and at Dungeness on the Kent coast, which were connected to the Avonmouth Thames pipeline. Two pipeline systems were laid, one, codenamed Bambi, to Cherbourg and one, codenamed Dumbo, to Boulogne. The Highs pipeline commenced pumping on 26 October, and remained in action until the end of the war. By December, nine 3-inch and 2-2-inch Hamel pipelines and four 3-inch and 2-2-inch Highs cable pipelines had been laid, a total of 17 pipelines. The Dumbo system was shut down on 7 August 1945, by which time the pipelines had carried 180 million imperial gallons of petrol. The Pluto pipelines were responsible for about 8% of the deliveries of petroleum products from the United Kingdom to the Allied Expeditionary Force in Northwest Europe. In early April 1942, the Chief of Combined Operations, Vice Admiral Lord Lewis Mountbatten, approached the Secretary for Petroleum, Geoffrey Lloyd, and asked if an oil pipeline could be laid across the English Channel. Pipelines were not the sole or even the principal means by which Combined Operations was contemplating supplying bulk petroleum, it intended to rely primarily on small shallow draft coastal tankers, of which 30 were under construction. The project to develop these pipelines was codenamed Operation Tombola, and the pipelines themselves became known as Tombolas. The submarine pipeline had sufficient advantages to make it worthwhile to explore as a backup means of supply. Submarine pipelines were less susceptible to enemy air attack in the frequently stormy English Channel weather, and their use would reduce the FOSS's dependency on vulnerable storage tanks ashore. At the time, submarine pipelines were in use in ports and over short distances, but no pipeline had ever been laid across such a great distance or under the currents and tidal conditions found in the English Channel. To minimize interference by the enemy and the effect of the tides, the entire pipeline would have to be laid in a single night. They regarded the proposal as infeasible using any known method of construction of pipelines six inches or more in diameter. In the hilly terrain of Iran, Anglo-Iranian had employed a three-inch pipeline. On 15 April he pitched his proposal for a continuous length of pipeline similar to a submarine communications cable without the core and insulation, but with armor to withstand the internal pressure, which could be deployed by a cable layer ship. Thus, the pipeline could be used for aviation spirit, and then switched to diesel fuel. The project was given the codename Pluto, which stood for, Pipeline Underwater Transportation of Oil, or, Pipeline Under the Ocean. Bernard J. Ellis, the chief engineer of the Burma Oil Company, was convinced that a flexible pipeline could be built from mild steel, which was more readily available than lead. His pipe was 3 plus 1, 2. Both stations were fed from the Avonmouth Thames pipeline, which had a capacity of 135,000 long tons per month. The pipeline connections to Pluto were completed by March 1944. Constructed from camouflaged scaffolding, fiberboard and old sewage pipe, the fake facility spanned three acres and included fake versions of pipelines, storage tanks, jetties, vehicle parks and anti-aircraft emplacements. The first highs pipeline was laid by HMS Latimer in just 10 hours on 12 August 1944, but the pipeline failed when an escorting destroyer caught it with its anchor and damaged it beyond repair. The barnacles were scraped off, and another attempt was made a few days later, but the pipeline broke about 29 nmi out. The expert technicians had been able to lay pipelines across the Bristol Channel and the Solent under the supervision of the designers, but it was another matter for the naval laying parties to achieve the same degree of proficiency under wartime conditions and across the much wider English Channel. On 3 October when the pressure was increased from 50 to 70 bars to augment the amount of fuel pumped, both pipelines failed, the highs due to a faulty coupling, and the Hamel when it encountered a sharp edge on the ocean floor. The highs pipeline was laid by HMS Sancroft, which commenced pumping on 26 October, and remained in action until the end of the war. Boulogne also had poor railway facilities, so the pipeline was extended to Calais where better railway connections were available to transport the fuel. By December, nine 3-inch and 2-2-inch Hamel pipelines and four 3-inch and 2-2-inch Highs cable pipelines had been laid, a total of 17 pipelines, and Dumbo was providing 1,300 long tons of petrol per day. Not one of the Highs cable pipelines broke, and the mean time between repairs of the Hamel pipelines varied between 52 and 112 days, with 68 days being the average. 
They could not be run at the intended pressure, so they carried only petrol, and plans for the pipelines to deliver aviation spirit as well were discarded. As the fighting moved on to Germany, Dumbo was connected to an inland pipeline system that was extended from Boulogne to Antwerp, Eindhoven and ultimately Emmerich. New lines continued to be laid, the last one being laid on the 24th of May. The system was finally closed down to save manpower on the 7th of August, by which time the pipelines had carried 180 million imperial gallons of petrol. The Royal Commission on Awards to Inventors awarded tax-free payments of £9,000 to Hartley, £5,000 to Ellis, £85 to M.K. Purvis, the designer of the conundrum, and £250 to A.E. Price, who designed the wedge-gripping device used to fix the pipeline near the shore. More than 90% of the pipeline was salvaged and subsequently scrapped. In all, 22,000 long tons of the original 23,000 long tons of lead and 3,300 long tons of the original 5,500 long tons of steel were recovered, along with 75,000 imperial gallons of petrol that were still in the pipelines. Although the pipeline itself is no longer in use, many of the buildings that were constructed or utilized to disguise it remain, especially on the Isle of Wight, where the former pumping station at Sandown is currently in use as a miniature golf facility. Samuel Elliott Morrison, the United States naval historian, noted that the pipelines proved very useful for supplying the Allied armies as they advanced in Germany. According to the civil official historian, Michael Poston, Operation Pluto was strategically important, tactically adventurous, and, from the industrial point of view, strenuous.